YouTube. This is Rashid Lane. I am back with a new video for you. This time I will teach you how to paint a monochromatic outdoor snow scene that you see here. This is a fun painting that only uses one color plus black and white. I actually learned how to do this from another YouTuber named Paint with David. That's the name of his channel. And so all credit goes to him. And I'll provide a link to, to his channel below. What I did differently was I did change up the color scheme. So mine is purple instead of blue. Also, his video was silent, so I added some tips and instructions for those who are new to watercolor paint. So the first thing you're going to do is sketch out your design. So I sketched out the barn here, and there's an image of it with the tree and just a few subtle details on the, on the house with the window. And then after that, what you're going to do is you're going to wet the top part of the paper, as you can see me doing that here. And then I added some purple, using a lot of water with the paint for that wash. So it should be translucent. Again, it's not any deep purple right there at the top. That's the sky area. Next, I'm going to add some deeper sections of purple to kind of define some of the clouds. When you're painting, you build up your color in layers and you start light to dark. So that's why you see it's really light at the beginning. And then I'm going to go back and go on top of the light areas and add some darker purple. I'm using a flat brush right for that section. It's just a little bit wider and it spreads out the color pretty nicely. And I'm working on the bottom section and I just wet my brush and it has a little bit of purple left in it. You don't want to have too much, but I just put a wet, wet the layer, well, a light layer of kind of translucent purple towards the bottom. Another wash down before I put the color on top of it. The only area that I added water to first was the top. Uh, the sky area above the above the, the shed and as you can see the part I'm working on with on this right side when I put the purple down it actually just automatically came out darker because it was on um, the paper was already dry and so it's kind of I'm just kind of mapping out where certain certain colors are gonna go and I'm gonna add details um, later on So I mean, again, I'm using only three colors. So I have purple, white, and black. So it's called monochromatic type of painting. So I'm doing. I'm putting another section of layers on top of that right side of the the shed, and you can see it's darker, getting darker. Blocking in some more areas with the purple. Make sure you have a pretty good amount of water in your brush for these stages right here. And you see the purple. The purple is not a really deep, rich purple. It's still pretty light. So it's because I have water in my brush, and I added water to the paint when I when I put it into the paint tray. And then that top section I'm working on, I just kind of wet my brush and I'm kind of like smoothing out the, fading out that layer at the top. You can also use white to fix certain areas. So you'll see me kind of go back in with white and a little bit and fix some of the areas. Again, with your black too, don't do any rich black yet until you see me me do that so like the area I just added uh, some black to still had some water with it so I bleed it in it bleed it with the purple 
it didn't really st it didn't stand out too too much but right now what I'm doing now that's pretty much just pure black for that area and I don't have too much water either like because I'm doing these sharp areas I'm doing these sharp edges and you don't want the, the paint to bleed so with your paintbrush you don't want to have a lot of water with it and so your your black that you're using for this area what I'm doing right now is just pretty much mostly paint and not a lot of water keep that in mind Again, you don't see it bleeding like it did on the left and right. And also, it's going to help you to make those sharp, thin lines and delicate details to have uh, less water with your brush. And then I'm holding my brush up a little bit higher to get these specific areas. Also keep in mind that this video is sped up for time purposes and so if you, I encourage you to definitely pause it and re rewind it if you need to. I did it several times as well. Probably will take you about, I will say an hour to an hour and a half to do this if you were doing it in real time. Again, those lines right there, I'm using it, I'm holding my brush up high, higher to where I can get those thin lines. So it's like holding it from the, the tip, making the tip of the brush touch the paper really de very delicately, and you'll get those thin lines. So don't press hard with the um, brush. And, and when, you, when you're working on those uh, right, area, the, uh, right areas with those lines, don't press really hard or you won't get the thin lines. When I paint, I just kind of work all over. So I'm going to the top, the roof. I work on the grass randomly. I just kind of move around the painting and, and make adjustments as I feel need. they need to be made. So there's no specific order that you have to go in when you're painting this. Working on the tree on the right side of the, the shed now. Again, you want a rich black, so not a lot of water with that. Those uh, when when painting those tree limbs. If you're still new to watercolor paint, you may want to have a separate sheet of paper beside you to use to test out some of these the strokes and lines. Like for instance, those thin lines I'm making, I think the first time I did it, I ended up making them too thick. So if you have a scratch piece of paper, and just practice making those thin lines on that paper before you do them on this, before you paint it on your real, your real piece, and it'll help you out so you won't mess up. Another thing that watercolor is not very forgiving. So if you actually, if you make a mistake, um, you're gonna need white paint to, to fix it. But 
it's harder to make uh, make adjustments with watercolor paint. But sometimes when I make mistakes, I just kind of like make it a part of the painting as opposed to trying to fix it. Uh, that's a good way to to make your mistakes uh, work out for your benefit. That's a purple again right there. That brown color was not actually, that was not supposed to be uh, in my brush, so I'm trying to wipe it up with white. But some of it I, le I left on there. You just want to use purple on the bottom. More purple. Kind of made a little, another mistake right there, so I went with, I went over it with some white paint. to me so I was trying to, I'm trying to adjust it. I'm going to let it, the black dry and then go back to that window and fix it. I'll come back to it.
It's the fun part. You could splatter paint on your on your painting to make the snow. And that's the last touch right there. Last detail.